So, Phyllis, you know, today was a day where we heard, among others, two paralegals uh, from, you know, before the court wrapped, were talking about, when well, they certainly weren't summary witnesses, they were uh, showing and reading information that essentially cannot come in through other ways, but they were essentially confirming information. And then from the Verizon and AT&T folks, we were hearing, you know, what a SIM card is and how you can go from one phone to the other uh, using different SIM cards. What was the significance and, I guess, the importance of this less bombastic side of the hearing? So I think if we think of the entire trial as a puzzle completed, um, what we saw happening today were little pieces being put into that puzzle that on its own, it it's pretty, look, seems pretty insignificant. You know, there, there's some colors here. But when you start connecting all of that information in a closing argument, for example, we start to see its importance. And I think more importantly, if you don't have those pieces, you won't be able to get that information in. John, what do you see as the importance of today? And then I definitely want to talk to you guys about the last 48, 72 hours in this court case, which has really changed a lot of things. Certainly, we've been talking about and listening about things that normally you don't hear in a court case, I guess. But you know, what is it that your takeaway is that from, from today? Today is like a mechanic. In order to get all the information into evidence, they need the foundation, which usually is stipulated to. But the court cannot force the parties to stipulate. Now, frankly, usually you do. I can't think of a time when I have not done that. But if I choose... Can you explain what that stipulation includes? Stipulation is agreement between the parties, and they'll read the stipulation. We agree that if a witness were called, he would testify or she as follows. And the court accepts the stipulation and then says, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, consider this in evidence. But the Trump defense team has decided not to do that. I think part of it is because Mr. Trump probably just is, wants a, is so, in his own mind, outraged that he said, I'm going to fight everything. But it is possible as a tactical matter, the, the jury doesn't know that the defense didn't stipulate. So possibly the jury could get a little bit annoyed at the prosecution for such sleepy testimony. But it's, it's necessary as a foundation to get things into evidence for the closing argument, or as they say in New York, for the summation. And so, Fels, we have now on Monday, expecting to hear from Michael Cohen, uh, Stormy Daniels, two plus days on the stand, uh, certainly had a lot of information. There is a question as to what benefit or how beneficial Stormy Daniels was for the prosecution. Well, I, that's certainly a question, and I, and I think we see it played out both in the direct, where we saw some of the damage that could be done because she was going off the rails, for lack of a better word, and then seeing it again on the cross, where a lot of the information that was covered were things that may or may not have been necessarily relevant, but certainly helped to establish this bias or this, you know, I hate Donald Trump. Um, you know, from, from one standpoint, say, well, who cares? Why? But it certainly goes to bias. And the defense had every reason to ask those questions. So I think you, we saw that being played out in terms of, of a judge looking at the testimony and evidence that's coming in, and even without objection, at some point saying, wait, wait, we are going far to a field, and I need to put a stop to it. And so far to a field could be what we could see if things go, to use your terms, off the rails on Monday with uh, the person that we're going to be hearing from, Michael Cohen. Uh, John, what do you think are the concerns or the things that the prosecution has to be concerned about when they finally bring in Cohen to the courtroom? And it could be days of testimony. I think if you look at David Pecker, the first witness, frequently the prosecution wants to start off with a good witness and end with a good witness. So I don't think that Michael Cohen's going to be the last witness. But uh, I think what they're concerned about is that he testify to a point where, like Stormy Daniels did, where he demonstrates that he's so biased that he might have not have told the truth. But let's wait to see. Let's wait to see and hear his testimony. But let me say the the whole world is watching this case, and I think that we need to be sure that Donald Trump, whatever you think about him, gets a fair trial. Absolutely. And I think that's what we're seeing being played out with this judge, which is why we see the judge being so vigilant 
about these pretrial motions and, and these orders outside of the presence of the jury in terms of, of deciding what to do. Is it weird? And, it, you know, I'm not an expert on this. I come at it with, you know, what everybody else, I guess, that has a perfunctory understanding of how the legal system works. Is it usual for the judge to tell, like, say, the defense, why didn't you guys, uh, like, object? Is that usual, John? The, the judge, judge is concerned, properly so, that if there's a conviction, that's a big if, mm -hmm. that there could be a serious appellate issue, which could lead to a reversal, like in Harvey Weinstein. And frequently the law is, if you do not object, you're not preserving the record, and you do not have a basis to appeal. So I think the judge was protecting the record uh, to try and make it appeal-proof. John Sale, thank you so very much. If you would, Phyllis and Lisa, stick around. But John, it's been a real treat to, to be able to speak with you. I thank you so much.